Two and a half billion people will arrive by 2050 on planet Earth. Most of them are going to be rice eaters. Every year, enough rice to feed 600 million people will not make it from farm to fork. Given the climate change, environment change, pollution, so arable land is getting decreased. So we have less land for cultivation. So how do we feed those people? Millions and billions of people increasing the population size. The rice industry is a long history, over 8,000 years of rice milling. Nothing moves fast in the world of rice milling. The first mechanized machines, the second generation machines were introduced about 160 years ago. So therefore, a better technology, better milling technology, definitely is going to help the farmers and it will also help to sustain the ecology because farmer will be more going for diversified options. And the message from us is that um, technology is, is here and if we use it appropriately, we can actually deliver a very sustainable agri-tech food supply system um, to deliver quality food, healthy food, uh, with minimal waste and uh, reduction of impact on the environment for society. Of course, technology plays a very, very vital role and more efficient technologies is the need of the hour. Less energy, more nutrition and less loss. Every large rice producing region has a challenge in terms of maximizing the output of the rice crop and delivering that to, uh, to the consumer and then uh, coping with the actual uh, waste product. Yeah, because rice is an evergreen food commodity in India. So I think any new technology which improves the quality of milling and quality of the rice, it's, it's evergreen opportunity, I should say. So rice milling is a hub Rest is a spoke, so hub has to be improved based on the present day available technologies, digital technologies, availability of the sensors, uh, availability of uh, confident of using the mobile phone, the digital technologies. So for an example, um, this machine we can run from a mobile phone. What underpins the service model is data. We have to be able to monitor machines remotely, which means internet connectivity, either through 4G, 5G, uh, or fixed internet, or even satellite uh, connections. We've looked at all of these options. So this machine here has a sister machine in India, and we can run the machine in India from here quite comfortably and monitor it in real time. And uh, that's the sort of power that data gives us. So yeah, I think we have to be careful, yeah. But look, we're not running a nuclear power station. We like to have access real time to look at what the machines are doing, but only if we need to. And that's only if a machine tells us that something's going wrong. We use that data to preemptively uh, pick up or intervene when things are starting to go wrong so that we minimize loss and damage. That's an interesting, interesting point in terms of um, how technology can actually support society. There are concerns in, in many agricultural communities about um, the availability of people to actually grow the quantity of uh, produce that is actually required. There is the need for support for the community to actually increase their output without increasing the, uh, the labour resource that they have available. Technology's role in managing that is, is going to be super critical because right now nothing is managed. So we've just come back from a trip to Nigeria where there, is no, there are no records. The, not even accurate measurements. Technology, and, and particularly the technology we're developing, brings us into a, a position where we can better monitor. Uh, that allows us to identify issues that would be either damaging for the machinery or wasteful uh, of energy or wasteful of product. You are bringing a new technology and new machinery, which India has might have not seen, the energy efficient technology. And it's such a compact technology, you no need of big rooms or infrastructure to accommodate it. A small farmer can easily accommodate in his place. That's the first point. And second point is, when we analyze the data, what the cool mill technology does and what the conventional Indian milling is doing. So there is a huge difference in the loss. And what we're trying to do is reassure 
millers at all levels, whether that be in large industrial mills or whether that be at a rural milling level, is this digitalisation gives you real opportunity. So finding a technical solution to directly going to enhance and ensure that uh, both uh, healthy products are delivered, but delivered efficiently. So the use of um, technology is needed and is part of the solution.